Hi there. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yes, I am a surprise. I'm a surprise to myself as well. Um, as, as you can see my, from, from my background, uh, I'm a veterinarian, uh, equine veterinarian and uh, data analyst. And then I've been doing some business development work as well. So uh, when I got the invitation to speak in a tech seminar, I was thinking like, all right, uh, what am I safe to talk about? I'm safe to talk about horses, myself and business development in animal health. Uh, so I'm going to talk about those three. I'm going to uh, tell about my journey uh, to actually be the founder of PetSophie, a platform and what kind of problems there are on the way. Uh, because what I found out today, everybody is very nicely uh, agreeing on uh, what a platform is and uh, how it should be funded and so forth. But uh, my experience is that that's not real life uh, how, how it has been going, for example, uh, in the case of Pet Sophie uh, and in the case of animal health in general. Uh, so I'll go through these uh, different problems uh, and um, maybe, um, maybe you can relate to those as well. Uh, so when I uh, started my career, uh, I uh, started to do uh, practice, equine practice, so uh, I was being a, a horse vet. So I was uh, doing lots of traveling to different stables, sitting in a car, driving from stables to stables, and I thought, that, well, this is not an efficient way of doing horse practice. Uh, so instead, I founded my first platform company and bought uh, horse stables. So I had horse stables where people can actually come and have their horse to live on, and then different kind of uh, uh, service providers come there to actually help, as, I, as myself, uh, to actually uh, treat the horses and so forth. So it was a very lively, and still is a very lively environment to be in. There are people, different kind of service providers coming to the stables uh, every day. So it's, it's a kind of a platform. Uh, but uh, of course, the scalability is quite bad you need quite a lot of stables to actually run it efficiently. And uh, yeah, uh, to scale that up, that's difficult uh, or impossible. So uh, one thing of going back to uh, how to actually make this more efficient and make veterinary practice more efficient uh, is do consolidation. And this is kind of how um, many investors uh, perceive platform econ economy. Uh, how many of you have come across this uh, kind of consolidation as a platform idea? None, okay. Um, I, I have been reading a lot of articles about it and of course doing it myself uh, uh, in my previous life and um, uh, I don't agree with this kind of uh, idea that uh, consolidation uh, is a platform, but uh, man, one may say against me as, as well. But I don't see customers in this picture at all. Uh, and that was also the real life. Uh, so uh, what we did back in 2012, uh, we consolidated a bunch of veterinary practices to become a veterinary chain. Uh, Animagi, and this was an investor-led um, process. Uh, what we did when we had those clinics is uh, that we look at the procurement sector, uh, accountancy, uh, management leadership and marketing to actually make it more efficient uh, and uh, to have the EBITDA levels up in those kind of things which can be centralized and managed from one place. The clinics were all over the country. Uh, but it was very, very difficult to actually do anything on the uh, customer, customer level and uh, the customer veterinarian relationship. Uh, and it's a complicated one uh, also from the fact that the cost, costs are going up all the time and the new technologies, instead of making it more practical, uh, the work more practical, practical and more fluent, they are actually creating a lot of problems in the veterinary world at the moment. Uh, with all the social media and emails and so forth, they are actually eating the EBITDA levels of uh, veterinary practices quite a lot. They are very, very uh, personal, independent, uh, personal dependent and uh, lots of sort of uh, social contact uh, is eating up uh, the uh, EBITDA levels of uh, veterinary practices at the moment. There were also other problems why uh, I founded Pet Sophie. Um, 
Well, I founded it with uh, Professor Hannes Lohi, who is doing genetics at the University of Helsinki and working with the uh, genetics of dogs. And uh, they were uh, investigating lots of diseases in animals and got, getting lots of uh, requests from people to comment on their dogs' uh, health. Uh, but they weren't vets, uh, so they didn't know the answer. People were sending, uh, they were investi investigating, for example, epilepsy in dogs. And uh, Hannes was getting lots of videos into his mailbox about epileptic dogs. And uh, he didn't know what to do with them. He was just a geneticist. So he was looking at the genes. Uh, but there was no way to actually send these dogs out to the right specialist because he didn't have the contacts and the data was sitting sort of in the university. Uh, when I was uh, uh, a business development leader in, or director in um, Evidencia, we then met and he explained the problem to me. And I said, yeah, well, we have the same problem. We have lots of dogs that come in with a certain disease where we don't know what the disease is and we would like to have uh, that animal uh, sending a blood sample, for example, to his research group. Uh, but there were no ways to actually share the data. So it was just to say to the owner, please go to this, uh, to, uh, take this uh, sample and send it to Hannes and his group might or might not uh, take an interest into that. Uh, so uh, sitting in these two silos, we saw that we share the same customers, uh, but we can't uh, efficiently have them transferred back and forth. So we thought, okay, we need this platform. And uh, then, I, then I said, okay, yeah, I, I think we need that too. Uh, let's find a company. So we set up Pet Sophie. Uh, and uh, it's a digital animal platform and it's about sharing data and making these connections and breaking the silo so that people wouldn't be stuck uh, in one silo, not, not getting help from the other. And uh, when we started to develop this, uh, I also found that uh, the telemedicine is get, getting more progressed. There's lots of things that we can do with the data also remotely, uh, so people don't have to go to the vets. And if we analyze the data efficiently, we can actually provide help to the vets that suffer from this kind of uh, business problem of not being efficient enough uh, in their current price situation. So uh, we, we started with the digital tools for diagnostics and self-help with the Pets of Intelligence tool. Uh, at the same time as we started uh, to develop the veterinary services online. So uh, any vet, uh, vet clinic can join us, uh, can have the credentials to be on Pet Sophie as a service provider. And uh, uh, then they can, uh, first of all, we have an API to their system so that they can share the data to the customers. And the customer can then share the data forward to, for example, a researcher. Uh, and uh, buy some services on the way, uh, telemedicine services and such. And um, it was very hard to explain this idea to investors and also uh, to other funders, public funders as well. I think that there was, this was back in the 2016 and there was still, still like, like a platform economy, although we had these great platforms being number one uh, in the world, uh, we had lots of sort of problems uh, in understanding what platform economy is and uh, what kind of value we can create with it. And um, I missed a lot of funding opportunities because I couldn't explain it right. Uh, I still don't know whether I can explain it right or whether people just don't understand what I'm saying. But there are uh, some problems uh, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, but I think uh, the point uh, is that the consumer and producer link interaction is the main point that we are going to uh, concentrate on. And uh, that's my sort of message that I'm trying to get across uh, to the investors as well. So if I think uh, whether these are platforms or not, the horse table thing, it's kind of... It is a platform, uh, but of course we are looking into a scalability uh, option, so uh, that is a platform, what we're doing at the moment. Uh, investors still are into the consolidation processes, of course they are very sort of uh, 
good way to invest. So if they find industry areas where they can consolidate further, they're definitely going for it. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the sort of, uh, from the investor point of view, I think it's still the biggest biggest uh, branch of investing that they are doing. But of course, we are trying to find those that actually invest into the technology and having the interactions and the network, network effects. And this is one thing um, that has come uh, in many slides, in many presentations today as well. And uh, a true platform is an ecosystem where players can trust each other. And that creates also uh, some of the problems that I have uh, when I talk to investors and funders uh, regarding Petsofi. Because um, often they ask whether I'm going to have veterinary services. If I, I'm going to provide veterinary services on Petsofi, well, I do from the sort of piloting point of view. Uh, but no, we are not going to own the means of production. We are going to be the ones uh, that uh, provide the technology for vet companies to join. Uh, and they can enjoy, enjoy uh, from the technology. Uh, if you're a big production company, you can't own the platform. Uh, if, if you are, for example, Evidencia, which is the biggest chain here in uh, Finland at the moment, you won't have the small players because they don't trust you. Uh, there's too much uh, uh, sort of um, friction going uh, between the uh, big and the small companies. It would be the same like Toyota would ask, uh, like a Tesla, would you join our platform? Uh, they don't do that. There's not enough trust. Um, the rules that you play on, uh, when you are creating, for example, APIs, uh, terms of service, uh, whatever is sort of the way of interacting on the platform, they have to be fair and they have to be transparent. Uh, so that's the means of work part. Uh, and if you look at the f ownership and the funding part, uh, it's the same. You have to have players uh, behind that are trusted in a way that you get all kinds of uh, people, uh, all kinds of companies joining. Uh, and you have to also think a little bit about the planned spread of the network. For example, us, we started with university connections with research. Uh, we got the trust from the university people first. And uh, then we knew, OK, we have enough credibility to go to the normal uh, veterinary practices. They know that we are science-based. We are on the right track. Uh, and they trusted us. If we would have started again from Evidencia, where of course I had lots of contacts with, uh, I'm not sure, or actually I am sure that it wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't have the network that we have now. We wouldn't have the consumers and we wouldn't have the university if there's one that's big and first and dominating. And that might be different uh, if you look at other business sectors, I'm going back to the fact that uh, we're talking about animal business. So it's different from uh, other business type, for example, mobility. So if you look at the success factors of a platform, uh, we are not in the sort of patent technology side, although we have one patent in, but uh, it's sort of easy to copy. So in a way, you have to be quickly uh, scalable uh, you have to have a brilliant business models, which we have, <laughs> I hope. And uh, you have to drive the ecosystem qu uh, growth quite quickly because there are going to be other players in the game as well. And uh, that's uh, sort of easy to communicate, but the hard part is extensibility. You might have a few uh, business models there, but when you have your ecosystem growing, it's uh, like an organic animal. Uh, well, if, you, if you have a proper ecosystem, you will get lots of innovation coming in. You should do this and this and this. And then uh, your monetary, uh, monetization has to also be extensible. So if you stick to one thing, and this is your way, in a linear way, uh, that's, I, I don't think that's a platform. Uh, my, one of our investors said there's many ways to skin the cat. And I don't know if it's a proper term for veterinarians, but uh, uh, it's a way to tell that uh, the monetization grows when you go uh, forward in, in the business. Uh, I already talked about the terms and policies. They have to uh, 
be uh, trustworthy and transparent, and everybody has to have the same same set of rules on the platform. And uh, of course, it sets some um, some factors that have to be taken care of in the tech planning as well. So, of course, you have to be uh, serving the scalability. Uh, you have to serve about the openness and connectivity uh, where they're linked to the APIs. Uh, so uh, when you think about the extensibility of your business, you have to plan this kind of uh, uh, way how to actually make this tech also to be uh, as uh, like um, creative as possible. Uh, so we're not going to uh, have each calendar or any other these kind of uh, typical um, typical uh, features uh, developed by ourselves, but we are going to use APIs to connect uh, to um, their kind of features that vets need, but not, are not the core of our idea. Our core is the data and building the integration between the customer and the, uh, and the veterinarian, in this case, uh, uh, using the data. And of course, when we are looking at the funding in Finland, uh, there's lots of games industry going on and it's really hot and everybody is thinking like, okay, uh, if, I, if I have uh, invested into this game uh, and it goes published and then there's a money flow coming in, it's very sort of linear way of thinking about it. Uh, and many investors think in this way. So I have had uh, like a tough time to ex uh, explain the business uh, platform business models uh, to certain investors in Finland. Uh, and uh, the problem with that is that we need bigger funding as well. So it has to be sort of pre-money pre -money funding because the cash flow, uh, it comes a little bit later. First comes the ecosystem uh, and then the money starts to flow in as well. The problem also has been that you, ha always, are, you always look for big partners to partnership with. And that, that's where, where we come to, first of all, the uh, big production actors being sort of more dominating on a platform. That's a difficult task, but also to the business of uh, animal health, which is very fragmented. If the biggest company in animal health in Finland is Evidencia with 50 million euros turnover each year, uh, you can imagine the rest of it is, uh, the next one is with uh, 12 million euros turnover yearly, uh, and the rest of them are sort of uh, median size of 250,000 uh, euros a year. So there are no big production actors here. You have small scale businesses, uh, and uh, that also is something where you have to sort of uh, uh, make investors understand what the business is like. And uh, the ecosystem growth, of course, uh, is the first year success story, whether it happens or not, whether it comes alive, whether there are new players coming with new ideas. Uh, and uh, we've been doing very good, very good um, uh, work with that, I, I believe. And uh, yeah, I think the biggest IT bubbles have been <laughs> conducted in animal business because of its size. It's, it's huge. Um, I'm not going to go through the uh, beginning of 2000 and the failures done uh, in animal business. Uh, but of course, it's uh, not very, um, like, uh, like uh, investors have been a little bit wary about animal business because they don't know it. It's big, uh, but it's hard to grasp and understand because it's so fragmented. Uh, but uh, still, like looking at the hot businesses elsewhere, it's a uh, very uh, good opportunity to actually start a platform with. There are lots of people that are engaging in animal business. How many of you guys have pets or have had pets at their house? Yes. Yeah, about 50%. So that's uh, actually the normal percentage what's happening uh, in households. So it's actually very, very close to many many people. So what can actually, this was my topic, so what can change in animal business with a platform? All you pet owners who have been um, thinking and being scared of the day that you have to go to the vets. Uh, it's very uncomfortable, especially if you have a cat, 
you have to fight the cat into the cage and travel and they are howling and everything. It's very complicated uh, and it's expensive and uh, all kinds of awful things. Um, but uh, from the veterinarian perspective, as I said, uh, there's lots of uh, hassle going on, uh, managing your WhatsApp, your emails, your social media accounts, uh, whatever. Uh, and to drop that for actually providing some online help, you can have plus 20% into your revenue just by converting your use of time, which is over an hour per day, uh, into profitable uh, income. Uh, also, if you do online visits, the efficacy of the treatments becomes bigger. And this is also fact-based. Uh, and you can also reduce your cost because you are not doing uh, that kind of things uh, that you would do uh, without first having a prior knowledge of the animal situation. Uh, that creates, of course, less pressure to price increases. Uh, and what drives most of the vets is the better treatment outcomes. They are not there for the money. They are there actually for the best of the animals. Uh, so uh, if you can con communicate that in an efficient way, uh, that is the thing that drives them to actually join uh, a platform like PetSophy. And of course, for the owner, there's less traveling, less worrying. Uh, uh, it's accessible. You have those people online. You can see what their profiles are. You can choose your own vet that is uh, somebody you know, or you can choose a specialist from a certain kind of specialist uh, uh, healthcare uh, unit or something like that. Uh, and uh, of course, the price. Uh, there's also price competition happening. Uh, it's a marketplace. Uh, and what drives the owner is more good quality life years to your pet uh, with the smaller price. So again, we are there for, for the animals and, and not for anything else. Um, so this is driving me as well. Better treatments, good quality life, yes, for your pets. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Laura.